So there have been a lot of CarPlay and Android Auto adapters that you plug into your vehicle for a completely wireless experience. I have been reviewing every single one of these one by one to determine which ones are stable and fast. But this new version of AutoCast has a bit of a twist to it. So not only can it do wireless CarPlay, but it also has a built-in Android experience that you can use without a phone at all. An experience that's both handy and reliable. Featuring a larger size than most other CarPlay adapters, it definitely stands out some subtle AutoCast branding, but then some new additions over other units, including an SD card slot for extra storage, or to perform updates, which I'll get to later on, and a SIM card slot for using data up to 4G speeds without phones even plugged in at all. And if you do connect your phone for the CarPlay experience, yes, it will use your data, but I noticed that that doesn't tether across to the Android experience, which would have been a nice feature to have. In terms of specs, there's a lot of reasons why this thing is a lot faster than other CarPlay and Android experiences on the market. Coming packed with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 450 octa-core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and built-in GPS, it also supports Bluetooth 5.0, Wi-Fi in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks, and cellular up to 4G. By the way, I am going to be splitting this review into two parts one for the Android experience, and one for the CarPlay experience. So if you want to use the chapters below to navigate to each of those, you can do so now. So starting with that Android experience, boot up of this device on average takes about 20 to 30 seconds, and that's testing running on both the 2019 Toyota RAV4 that I'm in right now, and the 2018 Volkswagen Tiguan. Remember, your car does have to have existing wired CarPlay, so if you're using something older that doesn't already have it, this device isn't going to work for you. That being said, Results with this box should be relatively consistent if your vehicle does have built-in CarPlay. Once you're in the system, you get the Android 9.0 experience, customized to feature an experience that looks very similar to CarPlay and works very similar as well. You can swipe between pages to get to the app you want. You can view all connection statuses on the top. You can view recent apps on the side, which by the way, you can toggle left or right depending on which side of the road you're driving on. You also get an app drawer to view all of your apps in typical Android fashion. And to state the obvious that you might have seen in all these clips, if you tap on your screen, it does bring up navigation that's floating just over top of everything for your home, back, and app switcher. And having it always on top, I've got to say, kind of a weird experience, but I understand why they did it. Still, would have liked to see something like a home button built into the left or right side, or just like swiping up from the bottom or something using gestures instead of having this floating on top. In terms of apps, you have your now playing widget, all the pre-installed apps like Google Maps, Spotify, but because it's an Android box, you also get the breadth of the Play Store within this box. And you can add pretty much anything, including Netflix, which comes pre-installed. Now disclaimer, I'm not really sure what the laws are around watching a video on that display while you're driving. I'm assuming it's not good, but hypothetically, if you were on a road trip, it wouldn't stop you. And on that note, if you install something from the App Store, it seems to be taking on the landscape mode that a lot of tablets are suited to, which actually fits really surprisingly well. You can see in this shot here, I'm playing Temple Run, and it does fit in very nicely with the display. But that being said, if you did try to install something like Instagram, for example, which only comes in portrait mode, it can do it, but it'll look like this. But again, you can because options. If you press the mic down at the bottom or you just say something like, hey Google, you'll get Google Voice Assistant and it's going to pop up and allow you to say things like open settings and directly launch an app or ask any questions you want. Another great feature of this device, again because Android, is that you can access the app switcher and then move apps into split screen. This can obviously be a lot better than the CarPlay or Android Auto experience because you can choose to pair two apps of whatever apps you want side by side while you're driving. So rather than relying on those predetermined dashboards built into CarPlay and Android Auto, you can choose to have whatever you want open. And by the way, I did actually test CarPlay in this view with Android on the left and CarPlay on the right. And while it did work, it did look like this, which wasn't perfect. But that being said, CarPlay was still fully functional. So the split screen view works exactly as expected. Now, speaking of CarPlay itself, it does work as expected. Once you launch the Speedplay app, it'll automatically remember your last connection and boot up. The time to boot after launching the Speedplay app is about five seconds from my testing once it remembers your device. And to make it even more effortless, if you wanna bypass that step of launching Speedplay yourself, there's an option in settings where you can select an app to boot. If you choose Speedplay, it'll open automatically when you start your vehicle. Now that process to start your vehicle all the way up to when it launches CarPlay 
is roughly around 50 seconds from my testing, but that's going to vary based on how long your vehicle takes to boot that infotainment system. Now CarPlay works just as expected, so once it is launched, you're going to get access to navigation and all of your steering wheel controls like you were used to. Using hands-free Siri, your voice command will automatically switch to Siri so that you're able to use that hands-free. And speaking of those steering wheel controls, your fast forward, rewind, and volume buttons will all work as expected. And that is a really important point given that some other CarPlay adapters don't work that way. So it's nice to have these fully integrated in as if it is the real CarPlay experience. Now, some of the negatives that I've brought up in other CarPlay reviews that are solved with this box. The audio lag for a few seconds is gone. This one now feels much more similar to wired CarPlay, which I'm so thankful for. The audio skipping when playing music is happening much less often than it was on other devices. It still happens, but maybe once or twice a week, not nearly as consistent as the other devices were. Call clarity seems very reliable and clear, so I am able to make phone calls without it sounding too distorted or with the other person having trouble hearing me. And overall, this device is very responsive when navigating. The one downside that I don't love, and I've already sort of touched on this today, is that that navigation of the home back and app switcher are always consistent, even when you're in the CarPlay app. I'd love for this to live somewhere else on the display, maybe to the left, the right, or the bottom, or like I said, simply using gestures to swipe to go home. But I also think it can just be disabled completely when you're in the CarPlay experience, given that if you go to your CarPlay home screen, you can hit car and go back to that Android experience anyway. So I don't see a use for it popping up all the time like it does. It's definitely not a deal breaker, but it is something that was sort of annoying and something I had to get used to over time. Now looking at the Speedplay app settings, there's a couple things that you can customize here. And that's going to include your mic gain, your auto connect, whether you want it to connect to your phone immediately on boot, and updating the look of that home button that brings you back to the Android experience from the CarPlay screen. Overall, the whole experience is actually surprisingly great. I really didn't expect to like this one. And including both CarPlay and Android within one box is great because it gives you this convenience of choice. Say you forget your phone or you just don't want to plug in CarPlay or you're going on a short trip and you want to be able to use that Android experience, it's nice to have the option. Still, the ability to use the full Android experience within the car might be something that's unnecessary for a lot of people. Considering you probably found this video by looking for a wireless CarPlay experience, you might really love CarPlay and you don't want to stray from that. That's why you would buy this box. Of course, the only trade-off with this is that navigation popping up all the time. So if you're using this thing purely for CarPlay, maybe you want to look for just a CarPlay adapter instead of having the Android experience. Overall, I think the Autocast Picasso is a great device. It is confidently the most stable experience I've had so far with wireless CarPlay, and of course that added benefit of an Android system built in. If you do have questions about the Autocast Picasso, leave them down below now. And as always, like with any other CarPlay adapter, your experience may vary with your vehicle. So if you pick up the Autocast Picasso, let me know which car you're testing it out on and what your experience has been. That way it'll help other people who are thinking of buying as well. Like I said before, I'm testing this thing on the 2019 Toyota RAV4 and the 2018 Volkswagen Tiguan. Let me know which car you're using down below now. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.